Hello, hello. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for waiting. Hello, hello. All right, all right. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so good, good, good. Um, okay, okay, okay. Hello, hello. Um, I think we're da, 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 da. okay. So, yes. Oh, oh, okay. So. I, I believe you guys can see and hear me. I think I can hear you. Yes, we're good. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, and I'm just gonna turn on the other screen, but I think, hola, que tal, hola, que tal. I think, um, so I, I won't waste time on, too much on, I know how late my documents to you were, and that's a total bummer, and I blame only um, myself and my 5,000 years of people and God, but, um, um, but at least uh, we can hop right to it here. Like, I hopefully it was clear. One document I sent you was essentially the gargantuan version of the practice exam, whatever that means, whatever it, uh, whatever the exam is or whatever. This, this is the thing we're going to all do together and be able to nail so that we can nail the real exam. Um, uh, but the very last problem of this practice exam is on the material we were just doing last week this mathematical interlude of the dot and cross products um uh so the so that's where we so that's where we were last week um and that's exactly where uh, we're gonna pick up by means of this practice problem which is the last some people okay um what was I going to say? So dot and cross products are on the exam. They're on in the practice exam. They're the like fourth question in the practice exam. That that page was excerpted and sent to you in addition to the exam so that we could just hop on and do it right now as learning or practice or whatever it is. It's picking up from the lecture from last time. Also, that's lecture dot and cross product is what the link, if it worked, um, is for. Um, I know my my 15 year old or my 16 year old is mortified that I would ever use Vimeo. I know it's like in utterly poor taste, but if you see anything from me from Vimeo, that means at least that I've actually gone through the stuff and, and edited it down to whatever is relevant for us and taken out the garbage of the other classes. Um, I'm finding the Zoom links and files like all over the place in a big mess. I don't I can keep giving you all of them, but it's a lot to go through. So once it's Vimeo, it means I've sort of gone through it. Um, and, uh, so that's what that most recently linked recording is I stand by that as like a relevant lecture on on uh, vectors anything I sent you before I don't know um, but I'll send you another one like that at the end of today okay ba -ba 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 -ba. right so but that's the same material like what we were doing last time is what we're doing and w w if we all try to get solutions to that excerpt that problem for excerpted from the practice exam so that's what I'm about to go over. The one thing is, well, I'm at least gonna take the moment to get it out and get my screen open, but please, if you haven't looked at it, like get it out or look at it. And if you're in the middle of it, keep thinking for a minute, um, but that's what we're talking about.
That is really loud. What's coming from my upstairs? That's not a new problem. Um, all right. Hopefully you're all with me. Hopefully you can see a black screen. This is practice midterm part four pointing. Like that's what we're talking about here. Keep working on it if you want to, or talk amongst yourselves. Um, what else can I? All right, we are talking. I'm going to switch my screens for a moment to fully catch us up, hopefully. That is to say, Right, so we are talking about this, yes, and we're about to talk about it. I'm switching screen. Oh, can you guys see? So I'm thinking you see now a white screen that says part A let vector A equal five I hat, et cetera, et cetera. Is, is that what um, pe or people were saying a moment ago? See, I can't even see you anymore, so it's a meaningless question. I'm sorry, hold on. This is ridiculous. Uh, Uh, where have all you people gone? Um, have I, I, what are you people seeing? I'm sorry, can you, are, are you seeing, uh, are you seeing the white, the, the problem of note? Could someone send me a, oh, that's a yes. Okay, so you're seeing the problem. Okay, great. I don't even know how, why that, how that's working because I don't, can't see anything, but okay. Um, then, uh, do you, oh, would you like more time or shall I start talking about this? 
put a thumbs up if you would like thumbs up please electronically if you'd like more time i'm going to trust that you thumbs up for more time okay i'm going to yes okay since if anybody said yes then i'm saying yeah. okay so i'm going to give you a little more time if you think you don't want more time if you think you're done um i would first of all encourage you to even please just try to draw the situation in the next problem at the bottom if you think you're done with part a Mo seriously try to uh, read and draw the next problem. Even getting that far would be very helpful. Um, uh, I have one of it, but yeah. Um, but I will also give you a bit more time and then we're gonna start. No, I, I know why I did. That was my purpose. Sorry. Okay, that's that. What I want to do here is. Hi. Oh, uh, people have to be let in. Is that sorry? Okay. By the way, I don't mean to be stalling. Um, I would like to get started too. Okay, I think we finally have what I wanted to do here. Um, right. Um, so we're going to get rolling on solving this, uh, solving this practice problem from the midterm. But I gotta tell you, I mean, I don't know how to put this. Uh, what, um, uh, what is it? Beats, bears. So, oh, I can't remember. The bottom line is I've got Dwight Schrute like staring at me as I'm trying to do physics, like giving me that Dwight Schrute look like from, and it is so hilarious, but so perpetually freaking me out because I keep literally thinking that, uh, you know, I'm I'm going to be shot and put in the freezer with the cat and and like lecture that about um, uh, whatever. Um, Dwight is such a great character. Okay, so um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, right? I'm going to start solving this. Um, um, we're given three vectors a, b, c, and d. Let me first of all make clear. Um, this is a new way of, of of notating vectors like part of what we're learning here is a new way of expressing vectors uh, there are two distinct ways one is a uh magnitude and a direction like that's what we used to say a vector is a magnitude and a direction but this new way i love this one um 
is not explicitly e expressing a, a vector as a magnitude in a direction. This e expresses a vector as the sum of constituent parts, a sum of individual vectors, each of which is a uh, magnitude and a direction, but for each of which the directions are familiar and deliberate and convenient. Let me show you what I mean. Um, or let me remind you what I mean. Okay, like this first vector, we're, we're told you know, five i hat minus 10 j hat plus k hat. Okay, that's not something we ever used to be told about a vector. We used to be told something like, Oh, wait, can you see? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Now I have to switch boards. I'm sorry, before I forget. Okay. Okay, you should now see the black. You should see, tell me if you do the black screen that says practice midterm A is the vector five i hat minus 10. That's what you see. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Um, so a is a vector. A is a an arrow with size and direction, just like it always was. But in the old days, we would, in the old days, like last year, we would think of a as some vector, some arrow, some arrow that points in a certain direction and has a certain length. In fact, if it's the vector A, our point, um, whether we were saying it formally last year or not, is A um, was a vector that had some length, call it A, and some particular direction, call it A, if you like. We wouldn't have called it that last year, but in other words, right, A is defined to be, I'm just reviewing what we said last time, but trying to show how it relates here, a is the pure size, the pure length of some arrow known as vector A. A is the pure size of that. Um, and uh, similarly, we can define a kind of pure direction. We can say, look, if you take the vector A, which is an arrow pointing in a certain direction of a certain size, if you take that vector and you divide by its size, so say you have a, a vector five feet pointing at a 40 degree angle. If you divide the vector by, by five, literally five, you take the vector five feet pointing at 40 degrees and you divide by five, then you have a vector of one foot pointing at 40 degrees. In other words, you have a vector pointing in a specific direction, the same very direction as this arrow, but only having a length of one. Um, so, it, uh, so, so all it does is, um, point in the direction of A without actually um, uh, contributing any quantity or, um, or any heft to any calculation that might be done. In other words, um, there's, in other words, there's some little vector that's one unit long, one unit long, um, and it points exactly parallel to the top vector. It's the signifier of the direction in which that top, it's like the pure version of just that direction. Then the top is five of those. It's uh, this unit vector A scaled up five times. So the total vector A, which might be uh, five feet at 40 degrees is like five times a one foot vector pointing at 40 degrees. So this just enables us from here on in, right? A with a carrot over it, a hat is a vector of length one pointing in the direction of a any possible vector you could ever imagine has its own respective unit vector just like it has its own length right um so without knowing it last year for example we were thinking of each vector any vector we had a a is a length A times a direction A. By definition. And some other vector B is some other length B 
um, in some direction be? And that's a totally cogent, um, like clean and simple way to talk about vectors. Like every vector is a magnitude in a direction. Yes, every vector is a monomial, a simple product given equal weight to its magnitude and direction. Sure. But then the thing is, if, if like that's A and this is B, now each one is defined as a magnitude and a direction, but the direction only makes sense or is interesting or noble or relevant to that vector. Like the direction A, say it was 40 degrees northeast, that's not a particular recognizable or usable direction. It just happens to be the direction of A. So it doesn't really allow A to be um, related in very easy way to B. Specifically, if you go back to original vectors like lab three last year, you can add quantities along the same axis. You can add or subtract numbers on the number line, but you can't add a north to an east or whatnot. So in order for vectors to be related to each other, we had, so yeah, so the, these are the formal ways of saying something like, like vector of size a in direction blah, 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 blah. last year if in english we said this vector has a certain size in a certain direction that was equivalent to mathematically writing what i'm doing here a times a hat but but what we're learning now is if you want to actually communicate among vectors it becomes more convenient to view each vector as itself a sum of constituent parts like a is really the sum of a x plus a y of course it's the sum of anything i it's the sum i could draw an arrow like this and an arrow like that but i'm intentionally saying that i can break up a into familiar perpendicular independent but convenient known directions like cross blocks and avenues in New York City or east, west, and north, south, et cetera. Like you know this from last year. You know that you could break a vector up into its components, but now I want to say, last, last extra page here. Formally, if we've been breaking up vectors into components, to break up a vector into its components is really to view it as a sum, a tip to tail sum of simple monomials products, i.e., we used to say, a equals a a hat. Now we say, in effect, a equals some amount in the x direction, which we designate with an i, plus some amount in the y direction, plus now we're blasting off finally into the third dimension, so plus some, like I'm saying these are equivalent. these are two different ways of expressing the same information one is one whole magnitude uh with one whole unfamiliar direction the other is breaking up the unfamiliar direction into a sum of familiar directions and again at what it, i is just defined to be the unit vector for the x-axis remember every vector every direction has its own unit vector like you don't have to be special to have a unit vector assigned to you any direction does but since the directions x, y, and z are special, since they're so convenient and common, we use them so much, they, instead of just writing x hat, y hat, and z hat, which some people do, we tend to write i, j, k to really highlight that, that we're talking about the, that convenient set. And also because otherwise we have a bunch of x's and y's going around that get really annoying. So, all right, that set, that, that's a reminder that what faces us now, this problem in the exam, uh, are we questioning that? All right. The, for the problem that we're looking at, it gives us four vector, four quantities. The first one is a vector is 5i hat minus 10j hat plus k hat. Um, that's a new way of expressing old information. Somehow this is equivalent to some, there is some a, a hat that equals the above. Like there is some a that works for this and some a hat, but it's not immediately obvious what they are. I'd have to figure them out. Like this is a different way of expressing the same information. So in the first exercise, this now we're getting rolling here. The first exercise says, what's the dot product between B and C? Okay, there's literally two equivalent definitions or things you can use for the dot product. I think the most fundamental thing to say about the dot product is what I have here on the screen. 
like the dot product is the scalar product between two vectors. Stop me if I'm going too fast or too, but the dot product is the way of measuring two vectors that produces a non-vector. So it's a measurement of the relationship between two vectors, or it's, you know, what is regular multiplication, like three times two, it's like two groups of three or three groups of two. Multiplication is a way of, of getting a grand total with, made from contributions of each of the two things being multiplied and each being treated equally weight or with equal weight. So like the dot product of B vector and C vector is, is the product of the, of the vector B length and the vector C length, but then times this almost weighting factor or this percentage factor here, the scaling factor um, that ultimately is indicating or tracking or, um, or um, um, uh, um, relying on the degree to which these two vectors are aligned, are parallel. That is, the scalar product between two vectors is supposed to be a measurement of them that is not concerned with direction, um, that does not produce an answer that has direction. It's not the vector product between these two vectors, it's the um, scalar product, which, which means this, I said this last time, it means in the limiting case, whatever the scalar product means, um, that's what happens when you multiply two numbers on a number line. Like, the pure form of multiplication that has nothing to do with directions whatsoever, doesn't invoke any kind of vector complexity is the number three times the number two. Well, what is that? That's picturing a number line starting at zero, walking out three, looking at that, and then multiplying by uh, what happens if you started at zero and walked out two. In other words, you're multiplying two um, numbers on the number line, two arrows that are perfectly overlying each other, perfectly parallel. Well, whatever the scalar product between two vectors is, it should, it should reduce to that exact same result in the case of two purely parallel vectors, right? Like um, if two vectors are parallel, they might as well not be vectors, they might as well be numbers. So in the limiting case um, where two vectors are parallel, that's exactly what you get. That is, oh yeah, what you tell me. What is, um, assume that theta is zero. What, what's the cosine of zero? Yes, awesome, thank you very much. Yes, 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 awesome. Right, so the point here is that that's right, it's one, yes, good. Um, so the whole, this is constructed so that in the extreme case where theta is zero, where two vectors are literally lying along, five, are parallel to each other, then um, the scalar product of the two vectors is literally the product of their two lengths because all they are are lengths to each other. But as, um, but as the two angles, uh, as the two vectors start getting farther and farther apart from each other directionally, as theta gets bigger and bigger, then um, then it really their direction starts mattering. They are less and less acting like just two numbers on the number line. Um, and so all that's really fair to multiply if we're looking for a scalar product is one vector times. Um, If this is a vector, this is a vector. Uh, what I'm, I don't want, what I'm getting at is, um, if two vectors are not parallel, uh, if two vectors are parallel, their dot product is a, a simple product, as in on the number line. If they're not parallel, then what can be multiplied entirely and only is one vector by the parallel component of the other. In other words, just like we used to do with work equaling the dot product of force with displacement, I'm saying to be try to be clear about this, I'm saying if you have 
this vector like a force vector and you have this vector like a displacement vector and and there's an angle of theta between them so they're both vectors they're displacement i mean they're both vectors they both have direction force and displacement um, um when we calculate work well first of all when we calculate work by multiplying force with displacement if you remember we get um um something measured in joules something that is equivalent to the transfer of energy um, um uh, the the positive work that i do pushing a desk across the floor is equivalent to the amount of kinetic energy measured in joules that i transfer to the desk while i push it across the floor this is a number this is not a vector like units of energy joules units of work that is they could be negative but it's still that's an amount that is not a directional quantity or a vector so when we just to remind you when we multiply force by displacement in this way that gets us work from last year we're multiplying a vector by a vector and getting a scalar that's a dot product and what are we doing when we do it our whole point was if um if i push on something uh, up into the right you know if i'm say say it's a desk and I'm trying to push it across the floor and that I don't care whether there's friction or not, but the way I'm getting it across the floor is by some rope um, that I hold on to um, and I walk. Like I don't want to crouch down on the floor and, 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 um, and do all that inconvenience. So I yank a rope up and to the right. So I'm pulling at some angle. Well, well how much work do I do? Well, any amount of sure work is force times displacement but any amount of force that i'm devoting in the upper direction any amount that i'm pulling that rope up that is not doing anything to displace the block across the floor like um any more than gravity is helping the block go again across the floor or slow down gravity's doing nothing uh, to that direction except perhaps indirectly through friction or something but the only contribution that um my force can make to horizontal displacement is through its horizontal component like we've always said that and it's the same point here in other words the way i would dot f with x is i would i would take x times um like this is f sine theta and this is f cosine i would only take the cosine component of f the horizontal parallel component of f and multiply that by x to calculate work. And in general, that's what we're saying. Um, oh, in general, that is what we're saying, that the dot product of any two vectors is going to yield a scalar, which is the product of their magnitudes, but times the cosine of the angle between them, uh, which would range from, therefore, 1 to 0. OK, I'm over. We said all that last time. Um, that's what we're using here. So let me finally get to it. Um, oh, oh, but that's okay. That's the part that I'm possibly saying too many times because it's the part everybody sort of does understand and wants to directly apply uh, to this example. This is correct. This is true. This is always true of the dot product. But you notice that it only is directly helpful. And this is the bummer of the practice problem. This formulation right here is only directly helpful if what you know about the vectors are each of their full sizes and the angle between them, or in other words, if you know their size and relative direction, i.e. if you've gotten the vectors expressed to you in the old form. Um, but if you're given vectors as we are in this problem, and often it's much more convenient, if you're given vectors expressed, oh, sorry, that didn't help you. Um, as if you're given vectors that are expressed as sums of, of, of components, then it's not clear at all what to do with this equation. And the fact is you can't actually directly do anything with this equation, except expand it once and all, once and for all to a form that does help us. That is to say, OK, let's work it out. If the dot product of B and C is always a number, which is BC cosine theta, then and if, if we're going to general component form of notation, if any arbitrary vector B I don't remember it in the witness. Okay, any arbitrary vector b um, can be viewed as the sum of its parts, the b part, some amount in the x direction times the x unit vector plus some amount in the y direction times the y, et cetera, et cetera. It, 
B is the sum of its components, and C is the sum of its components. So what we said last time was, what we said last time was to get the dot product of B and C, we could fully write it out component by component. This is the key now. This is the model to follow for the cross product, which is really the hairy part. We're, I'm literally writing out the dot product as a, a dot of two full sets of three components. Like here's my B vector, a set of three components. It's gonna dot with my C vector, a set of three components. So I'm going to go term by term, like this is in effect FOIL or whatever you want to call it. But I have th three times three, so I should have a you know a grand total of nine pairings, nine um, terms. But 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 we're going to go term by term and see if there's any patterns. I start with b x i hat dot um, b x i hat dot c x um sorry bx i hat dot cx i hat which is to say bx cx i hat dot i hat okay i hat time dot i hat we said is one so that whole thing reduces to the number bx cx then the next term you know going first next is bx i hat dot cy j hat so now we have an i dotted with a j and we said that was zero because they're perpendicular so that term drops out and if you just look at what's happening and you can extrapolate all the rest of the terms or you can write out all the rest of the terms and since the dot product of like unit vectors are all, is always one and the dot product of unlike unit vectors is always zero the only terms that are going to survive out of all nine the only terms that will survive all this cross multiplication um oh it is this what i mean to it I don't know, this, is, this is not what I mean to. I'm sorry. Um, the only terms that will survive are the like terms. Pardon me, I'm relaxed. That's, I guess, one of the answers. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's the answer. To, yeah. So, but I don't mean to, I don't know why this is dragging out. Sorry. Okay, what I would like to say. The dot product, then, once you do it out term by term, you end up getting a sum of like products. Did I lose? Oh, here we go. Right. BC cosine theta is true and always the dot product between B and C, but that's useful for one form of vectors. It's equivalent to if I do it out term by term, the product of B's and C's X terms with B's and C's Y terms and B's and C's Z terms, like it's the product of the parallel aligned terms because the dot product is a measurement of alignment of two vectors. And it's the sum of these three numbers, like this is a number, this is a number, this is a number, really, this is a number times a number plus a number times a number plus a number times a number. So you get one big number. Uh, a number that's equivalent to BC cosine theta, but this is the form that's relevant, right? This is to the one that, okay, wait, before we, so I think this is where I got the answer a second ago. To this question, B, applying it here uh, to the example here, I forget, where, yeah, okay, where, um, I'm saying to do it finally after all this talk um, equals the, the x term times the cx term. Well, the bx term, there is no bx term, it's zero. So um, plus the by term times the cy term plus the bz term times the bz term. So, that, so the by term is four the b the cy term is negative one uh, plus the bz term is negative four and the cz term is zero uh, so the answer is neg is the number negative four um, do people see where uh, so that's the first uh, um, 
the dot pro the answer to the first one is negative four. Are people uh, okay with that? Let's say I'm going to go. It's of course all the action is really bad. So it's basically two different ways of talking about vectors, two different ways of getting the same answer to the same thing. But you have to know both because both situations come up. Um, I'm going to keep going. All right, it gets more interesting, of course, with the cross product, which I think comes now. All right, that that was that was the first exercise. All right, so then the next exercise, and this is what it will look like on the exam. The next one was um, was a cross B. Yeah, A cross B. All right. Now, this is where I think the cross product is more interesting. The cross product is measuring not only uh, both the magnitudes of two vectors, but it's measuring also, it's taking into account their directional relationship, like how much direction is playing a role uh, in, in the pair of two vectors. And if they were parallel, then direction wouldn't be playing a role at all. But the more they differ directionally is the more direction matters in their relationship. So it measures the extent to which two vectors are big and perpendicular. That's number one. But number two, the measurement it spits out, the cross product, the measurement it spits out is not just a number, but a vector itself. The number tells you something and the direction tells you something about the, so the number tells you about the size of the vectors that you're dealing with and the direction tells you about the relative direct direction. That makes things a little bit more fascinating. All right, on the one end, it is all about perpendicularity in the same way that the dot product is all about parallelism. So it absolutely is fair and true to assume, to believe as people will, well, uh, just like we said that the dot product is AB co uh, cos theta, if you're assuming that the, cross product would be a b sine theta you'd be right but be very careful now in the case of the dot product the dot product of a and b was equal to a b cos theta end of discussion if the dot product between vector a and vector b was a number the number is a b cos theta no more to say here the cross product of two vectors a and b is a vector so the magnitude of that vector is a b sine theta but that's not our whole answer because it's a vector so we still need to get the direction of it so what is the direction? If, if we have any two vectors, A and B, um, and we want to know their cross product, so here's A. If we have two vectors, and here's A, and let's see, and here's B, uh, OK, two vectors, A and B, and this is A, of course, of course. Try to be cool. That's what happens. This is A and this is B. Okay. Um, sorry. If we want to know the cross product, we want to know something that will get that's measuring the extent to which these two are perpendicular to each other. We're gonna get a vector which itself to cut to the chase must be perpendicular to each of these, i.e., to both of them. Uh, for a number of reasons, I think there are all different ways of saying the same thing. To my mind, the simplest way to think of it is, is um, again, we're performing some kind of operation or measurement on this pair. Um, whatever you generally think multiplication is supposed to do, or, or addition, or things like that, it's some, uh, some um, sort of box that we're putting this pair into, and out of that box is going to come a result. There's no reason that the box or the result should favor one vector any more than the other. It's not like a squared plus b or times b or something like that. So there's no reason the final answer should point in a direction that's any more inclined towards one of these directions than toward the other. There's no reason one of these directions should get more weight in this operation. Um, so our final answer should be sort of equally close to both of these directions if possible, but it's not possible because no final answer, any final answer that was essentially parallel to A would definitely not be parallel to B and vice versa. So any final answer that would start being a little bit close to one is not going to be close to the other, and that can't work. So instead, the answer must be equally far directionally, angularly, from both of these vectors. That is, as long as the answer is 90 degrees away from A and 90 degrees away from B, then it's totally fair. It's it's taken the contribution of each entirely equally. 
And there is always such a vector. Given any two vectors, A, B pointing anywhere, two vectors, there will always be a vector that is 90 degrees to both of them because there's always a vector that points out of the plane in which uh, that contains them or into the plane. There's a vector that comes out like, like, oops, like an arrow coming out of this page, or there's an, the back of the arrow that we would see feathers going away. There's a vector pointing into this page. Both of those vectors are perpendicular to A and B. They're perpendicular to the whole plane. So one of those vectors is actually the answer. One of those vectors is the answer to the direction for the final vector that is the cross product between A and B. A and B, A cross B, excuse me, vector A cross with vector B will produce a vector C, like whose magnitude sure is what you'd expect, A, B sine theta, but then a vector who has that magnitude but has a direction as well, because it's a vector. What direction does it point in? Well, it's either gonna point out of the plane of A and B or into, that's the question I have, to answer right now. And I know I'm aware of the time. Um, I'm just about there. It, given any two vectors, A and B, and we're crossed, so they have their, some angle to each other, theta, right? So they're necessarily in some plane, like it doesn't matter how I tilt my board. Once I draw A and B, there's a plane that contains them. I'm saying that the cross product C of the two of them will necessarily point along the axis perpendicular to the plane containing both A and B. But the question is, will it point one way that axis or the other? Put another way, the question is, what do we call positive for that axis and what do we call negative? There is a convention for this that we all follow. We actually, we have to be consistent, otherwise it's crazy. So the convention for deciding, for assigning, for assigning, plus and minus to the direction of the cross product result, the unit vector that points along the answer. The convention is called the right, it's called the right hand rule. You may have heard of it. Um, you may have heard many versions of it. It's actually super, it's weird, but super important. The right, and I'm gonna have to, I know we have like two minutes, although I'm not gonna hop off, I, but I know some people will have to. So. The right-hand rule, it, you, can, you, can't, there's, you can't dodge around it. It's awkward and silly and weird, but it's actually necessary. The right-hand rule goes like this. For any two vectors, A and B, that you're crossing, it's literally a math thing. For any two vectors of, for which you're taking the cross product, any two vectors, remember, you can always, you draw them and there's always a plane that contains both. So you can always picture that plane, like my blackboard. You want to know the direction of the cross product answer, whether it pops out of the plane or into, so to speak. How you know always is you take your right hand, and I play this over and over and practice in private, seriously, because it's you um, take your right hand and you point your fingers of your right hand along vector A, like order matters. This is not a commutative relationship. You place your, if you're crossing A with B, you're doing A cross B, you place your fingers along A, parallel to A, and then you curl your fingers to B. And whichever way your thumb is pointing, that is the answer. Of, that's the positive answer, literally. Like in this case, I curled from A to B and my thumb pointed into the board. So we would draw that like X, like we would see the tail feathers of an arrow flying away from our eye into the board. That would be the direction of C, if C is the cross product of A and B. That no, you, without a right hand or whatever, you could already know in advance, you do know, the answer is going to be along that axis, either into the border out of. But the question is which way? And for us all to be consistent in three dimensions, the answer is use your right hand and follow this. So whatever your thumb does is the positive answer. Let me show you why it's really making a difference. First of all, if I do B cross A, if you're if you're following this and you try it, if I put my hand, my fingers along B and curl up to A, then my thumb points the other way. And that's the point is that like, is like A cross B, sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself or behind myself or whatever, but A, I oh, you, oh, you don't know what just happened, sorry. Okay. Um, 
A cross B necessarily always equals the opposite of B cross A. One will point one way, the other will point the 180 degrees the other way along the same axis. That's number one. Um, number two, the thing about your hand, like what is your hand actually doing? It's so silly. Well, we're just taking advantage of the constraints of human anatomy to sort of force a right angle pointing the right way where we need it. But like, I, I never understood the rule until I realized this. We say point your, what we're really saying is point your fingers along the first vector A, okay, point your fingers along that. But then realize when we say point your, and I know it's four or five, if you gotta go, please go, but I'm, I'm gonna finish this. Um, um, and I always post this and blah, blah, blah. And we'll just pick up from here in the, I would go to problem one next in the practice exam on Wednesday, the first thing I'll do, is it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday is the first problem practice exam, just for whatever it's worth, so you might wanna look at that. But anyway, if I put my fingers along vector A, if someone tells me, put your fingers along A, the truth is I could do that a number of ways. I could go like this, or I could go like this, like slicing, or I could go like this. They're all pointing along A. But then the second instruction is curl your fingers toward B. Well, so what I'm really saying is point your fingers along A, realize there's a whole bunch of different options you have for doing that. Then peek ahead, realize you're gonna have to curve your hand toward B. So place your fingers in the one and only orientation that allows them to curl toward B without either doing something really awkward and embarrassing or breaking your hand. Like you can't put your fingers on it and then curl towards B. That, so it really means find out the way you can stick your hand so that you can curl it from A to B. Wherever your thumb points, that's the answer to the cross product. Now, that's, that, that's the thing I didn't say last time. That's the direction of the answer. I'm flying that again, if you've got to leave, please leave. I'm just gonna wrap this up for posterity right now. Like I'm gonna finish my point and blast through the answers to this. Uh, feel free to stay if you want. Feel free not, and just to see the recording later, I pop, but I'm just gonna keep doing it because that's, unless someone literally shuts me to, oh, and class ends at four. Good Lord. Right, thank you. You're such a good person to say, oh my God, right, I have 15, I totally thought I had four. Those who can't manage space and time teach physics, right. All right, so I'll slow down a second. So all of that is the direction of the answer to a cross product. Like the magnitude is A, B, sine theta, like you would guess. The direction is perpendicular to both. What that really means then is, before I do this, like it means a lot, but I still don't have an equation or a formula or procedure for doing a cross product. I, I do, if someone says vector A is this long, vector B is that long and they're separated by this angle, then I could do a cross product based on what I've said so far. But if I have what we're given here, I lost it, um, you know, vectors like five i hat minus blah, blah, I still have no idea how to cross two vectors according to their components. Like with dot product, I figured it out. With dot product, I remembered i, j, and k, and I just foiled out all the components of dotting. That is what we do for the cross product as well. That's what we did in principle last time on the last video, but I rushed it then. And now we do have 13 minutes, so I'm gonna do this carefully. I'm saying, because this is the, the result that mystifies people and intimidates people. I'm saying, I'll just, I'm starting all new page. But I'm saying. Okay. I am saying. If you want to know how to cross two vectors, but vectors that are expressed as a function of components, the way we have here, okay, then well, A cross B, what does it equal? Well, it, remember that A in general equals AX times I hat plus AY times J hat plus AZ times K hat. Like any vector A in general can be, is the sum of through an x, y, and z part at some portion each. And that's what those constants, ax, ay, az are. Those are just numbers. Um, and b similarly is the same thing, it is the sum of its components. This is how we relate vectors to each other, is the point. So if we want to cross two vectors, let's just carefully realize that the cross of two. So a cross b must be that whole Michigan thing cross with the next whole Michigan thing. I'm not gonna uh, trivialize it, but you know, the sum of three 
cross with the sum of three. So again, I'm gonna go term by term and in principle get nine total terms, but let's just go carefully. The first term, the first term is a x i hat crossed with uh, b x i hat. Okay, a x i hat cross b x i hat. That's the same thing as a x b x i hat cross i hat. Now. I'm not going to ask you to participate because it's over. You're in overtime now. But um, you, uh, what is I hat cross I hat? Um, it is, as we all know, zero. So the first term. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's I I cross I hat is zero. So the full first term vanishes and doesn't contribute anything to the answer. Let me go to the second term now. Okay, so the second term is a x i hat cross b y j hat, right? And that's the same thing as a x b y i cross j. And i cross j is not zero. And it's not one, it's a vector, because if you cross one vector with another, you get a vector. It's a vector perpendicular to both and following the right-hand rule, i.e. it's the vector k hat. So this term, a, x, b, y, does give us something. It gives us, um, oh, that's a k, it's supposed to be a k, sorry. Okay, that second term gives us a vector component, like a small vector that has some length pointing purely along the z axis. So a z component vector, okay? What's gonna happen as I go through all the terms, I guess, in fact, I do have the time to do it. I'm gonna, let's go through the terms or at least, actually, you should, I'm gonna give you, I'll do it too with my screen off, but you should go through the rest of the terms and really see what's happening here because we get a monstrosity at the end that won't seem as monstrous if you get what's happening. So like, if you've never done it before, foil out the rest of the nine terms and some will disappear to zero, but you'll get, uh, you'll get some I terms, some J terms and some K terms. And honestly, you'll get two of each. So you'll collect them and put them together. I'll do it too, but, um, but uh, hold on, come in, uh, but uh, don't look at my screen for one, just do it and we'll do this.
actually are going to go. We're going to start. Okay, you can, so if you are running out of time, you can um, tell me if this is what how I do it. I'm doing turn by turn. And then I look at the terms one by one. Well, okay, so these are all the all the nine possibilities. And while they're scrolling out, I look at the first one. Okay, I cross K. That's not gonna equal zero. What is I cross K gonna equal? Actually, did anybody say or type in? Because it's not gonna equal zero. So I know this is gonna be, um, does anyone wanna say, well, okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just, I cross K is going to equal something perpendicular to both, but obeying the right hand rule. So I don't know, does anybody want to guess? I cross K. I'll give you a hint. I cross J is K. J cross K is I. K cross I is J. What, and I'm actually serious here. Like what is I cross K? Well, I'll just, since we're running out of time, if you said it's negative J, you're right. I don't know if that's what people said or not. If you said it's negative J, you're right. So this whole thing here is like negative AX, uh, B, Z, it's negative blah, 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 J, okay? Then this one we have J cross I. Well, I cross J is K. So J cross I is negative K. So this whole thing is negative A, Y, B, X, K, I'm doing this fast now. Now this is J cross J, so that's zero. J cross K is I, so this whole thing is A, Y, B, Z, I, like, but positive. This is K cross I, I mean, I wish I could like ask you guys now, but K cross I, well, K cross I is J, so this whole thing is positive A, Z, B, X, and how am I getting that each time? Right hand rule. Um, K cross J, well, I, J, K, K cross J is negative I, so this is negative A, Z, B. I'm doing this fast, but this is how it goes. Um, and then these last are K, K, that's zero. So I get three J terms, three I terms, three K terms, and then three negative, negative, which makes sense because we're saying um, you can only cross perpendicular components but if you cross them in one order, you get a positive. And if you cross them in the other order, you get negative. So that's, we're just getting all the combinations here. And the result then final, oh, I think I'm, the result of the whole cross product between any two arbitrary vectors A and B, did I ever write it down? Yeah, the, the result, yeah. oh, tell me, I don't, well, the result is this. And this is what I applied to every one of the answers there. And then I'll just read out the answers or whatever. Um, so for any two arbitrary vectors, A cross B, if you want the component by component form of the cross product, it is always A, Y, B, Z minus A, Z, B, Y. All that makes the uh, component in the X direction plus A, Z, B X minus A X B Z all that in the J direction plus and this is not our doing this is always the case um, A X B Y minus A Y B X it is a pattern and it's more than a pattern it's it's a mess it's more than a pattern it's the logic of saying this is the operation that only that cares the extent to which two things are perpendicular. So we're only multiplying perpendicular components, in a sense, all the combinations thereof. So we get a vector with three components, the size determined by these, okay, that's the cross product. That's equivalent to AB sine theta, right-hand rule. It's just the formulation that we need here. So now technically class is just about over, but I'm gonna blast through and finish this and get the answers for this so that everybody can see. Anyway, you can leave at any moment, of course, and I apologize, but, or, and you get the recording, blah, blah, or you can stay as I blast through it. So this is the cross product that I, in, I uh, 
you're not supposed to memorize this. You're supposed to be able to produce it in any moment. And you do accidentally end up memorizing it. But this is what I'm going to use to do the cross products needed here in this problem. So it's we're asked, we're asked to do A cross B. And in this case, vector A uh, here, vector A was given as 5i uh, minus 10j plus k. So when I look at that, what I'm saying is ax is positive 5, uh, ay is negative 10, az is positive 1. Like that's what that statement means to me. And I believe we were crossing with b. b is 4j minus 4k. So again, to me, what that is, is um, the i component sorry, bx is zero, by is positive four, and bz is negative four. And if you do, if you want to ask, uh, hope, if that's not clear, you should really ask, uh, let's see. Okay, those are my two vectors. I'm going to cross them because I believe that's what I'm supposed to do. Yes, um, so I'm literally going to go like this. I'm going to follow the formula that we just said, only I do remember it. So I'm going to go uh, a y, that's negative 10, times bz, that's negative four, okay? So minus az, that's one, times uh, by, that is positive four. I'm a slob, as you can see, but that, I'm gonna clean that up, but that's the x component of this vector, plus, now we go to the y component, it's going to be az, which is positive one times b um, x, which is four positive four minus a x that's positive five times b z that's negative four. I know it's a wonder that I could even read my own. Uh, that all together makes the j component of our answer, or the the y component, and the final thing is um, a uh, x that is positive five times b y that is positive four um minus a y that's negative 10 times b x that is positive four i've undoubtedly made a mistake but i don't think so um so now to clean up literally to in both ways clean this up uh the i is 40 minus four, yeah, I do remember this actually. So we get 36i plus uh, four plus 20, so I believe plus 24, I'll check that again, j plus um, uh, 20 plus 40, 60, that doesn't sound right, I'll check it again, but plus, 46, what I'm gonna say right now, plus 60. Now I'll check this, but you, wait. Uh, if right off, I'm gonna check it again right now and still continue, but if anybody right off the bat has any, if you got a different answer and you feel like you did do it right, you can stop me right now and say, and because I undoubtedly went too fast right now. So did anybody get a different answer and wanna question what I, any of my negative signs or positive signs? If not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look myself, as I said. I wonder what I got. I did the other class. Can I never get an answer? Is it possible I didn't get an answer? Well, well let's see. Um, anybody have a comment? No, I'm checking one. I'm gonna go on in a moment, but I'll double check after I hang up, so to speak. But A Y B Z, right? So.
times negative four and square root of x. That's fucking hard. Times b minus b. Yeah. All right, I think. And yes, I actually do believe this is the right answer, but um, so it's a vector that is the sum of some components. That's a cross b. Um, um, then we're asked, now it looks like things are going to get longer from here, um, but they don't. Um, we're now asked to take, uh, we're asked to take a vector B cross C and then dot that vector with some other vector. Um, the result of the whole thing will just be a number. Okay. B cross C. We'll do, we can do it a little bit faster now, hopefully. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, b y, which is four, um, b y times c z, uh, which is zero. So that's nothing. Uh, minus b z, uh, which is negative four, times c y, and that's negative. One, let's be careful there. Um, B Z, B Z, which is negative four times C Y, which is negative one. So those are both negatives. I'm gonna have to be very careful there. That's the I component. Um, uh, plus uh, B Z, that's negative four times C X, that's zero minus uh, bx. That's zero uh, times whatever times uh, c z, and it doesn't matter because that's zero. That'll be the j component, and the k component will be bx, which is zero um, times c y, but it doesn't matter minus b y, which is four times cx, which is zero. So we don't have those components. And the first one, even though I'm sure I, there's so many negative signs, I'm gonna screw it up. But I think the first one really you get uh, negative four times negative one is positive four, but it's subtracted. So I believe the answer to this whole thing is negative four i hat. That is a vector, like a very simple vector, a vector that points to the left on the x-axis for steps, but it is a vector. That's what I believe is the answer to B cross C. But then we're asked to take that vector and dot it with vector C. So we're asked to take the vector, what I just say, for um, uh, I hat and dot it with the vector C. The vector C is negative J hat. I could. I don't mean to be. Um, I don't mean to be weird about these minus signs. Um, I can be consistent. So we're doing negative four i dotted with negative j hat. Um, well, what is that? Um, that's zero because the dot product, however you look at it, is just the sum of like components, right? You you multiply the matching components. If there's two i's or two j's, or but. Those are totally orthogonal, totally perpendicular, those two vectors. So the dot product is zero. So the answer to the whole thing for three, the answer to the whole thing, um, the dot of C with the cross of B and C is all zero. And then for four, we're going to take the dot product of C and A, get a number, and multiply that number by the pure number D. So this is pure multiplication. But uh, C dot A. Well, C 
uh, it's just it's just multiplying the matching components. So it's negative one times negative 10, which equals 10. And then we're supposed to multiply that by uh, D, which is a pure number three. So the answer to four is literally the number 30 and on the slob here, but that's, um, okay, wait, I believe that's as much as I want to do, yeah, as much as we can do right now. Uh, I'm going to leave alone the part B for the moment. I'll pick up with there on Wednesday and um, the first problem in the midterm. Uh, when is it? I don't know. I don't know. But be, but anybody who's still hanging on, and again, you could have left 10 minutes ago. You can let, leave now. No, it's all totally understood. But if you are still here and want to ask any questions about any of this, this would be a great time. I'm going to take a breath. So please let me know if any questions you want to ask about this. Professor? Yes. Hi. Okay. So I'm a little retarded, so I don't really understand that much. So I just want to make sure, like, we just first we have to like combine the like terms and then we plug in the givens that we have. Oh wait, okay. So you're not retarded. No, it's a fair question, but um, the the main thing is we're actually learning two different forms of multiplication. So in one of them, it's all about the like terms. But the other one, it's really all about the unlike terms. So, we, so I guess I need to be. So that's probably why you're confused, is because we do some of each. But which are you asking about? Could you be? Could you point me to like? How about this? What's the what's the last thing I said? It could be super early. It could be an hour ago. But what can you name? Point me to a thing that you did understand, but before you lost the? Because this will help everybody else. Like it was. Sorry. So I was. It was clear um, up to the part before you started plugging in the numbers and before like you have to go oh. back. Oh, okay, wait, that's very helpful. Wait, but anytime anybody could say it was clear until, that's hugely helpful. So wait, okay, it was, and even if you're, you know, I know it wasn't, nothing's perfectly clear, but if it was sort of clear before I put in the numbers, like, could I even say, by, by putting the numbers, do you mean around here? Like when I actually plugged in the example from, from the page with the five and the 10 and the K, like, is that about where I can start talking right now to answer oh. or, or before that? Or like, so or right more here, like, like this is, okay. that was, yeah, the other slide. You have to go back. Wait, wait. So wait, so this slide, I should talk, I, I should say this, yes or no? Yeah, I feel like you have to go over this one again and then the okay. other one. All right, all right, no, fair enough. And this, yes, this thing, okay, I'm gonna write it. For, well, this thing that we're looking at right now in blue, this is a monster. Let me just say to everybody, this is a perfect, like anybody who has a moment to hang out right now, if I'm not um, taking you away, this is a very, very fair, very fair place for anybody and everybody to stop and go and go like, wait, what's going on here? This, I honestly believe this is the longest expression that you will have seen in physics or math that you actually kind of have to know to this point. Like, I, I, I mean, there are more complicated things in the world, but this is probably the most complicated thing that's come up yet. Um, and I hated it forever. It looks like a mess. So it is worth talking about. Um, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to explain it kind of in a different direction from what I was doing before. I, so I'm not just repeating. Um, what we're, what we're, what, what all this mess, all these blue terms, I mean, okay. All those terms are an answer to the question, what is the cross product of two vectors? Like if you have two random arrows, they're different lengths in different directions. If you cross, if you, if you multiply them in a certain way that we're now discussing for the first time, if you multiply them in a certain way, we wanna know what the answer is to that multiplication. The thing is with vectors, there's different types of multiplication. We've ne we, we never saw them before in life. In life, we used to have numbers like three and two, and I'm not, I'm saying this to everybody, like numbers, you have three and two, you can multiply them, you get six, or you multiply two and three, you get six. I don't, you know, whatever it sort of means, we're sort of used to it. Okay, but now we've got not just numbers, but arrows that we're learning to multiply. We've got arrows that we're trying to multiply in some meaningful way. And I'm ultimately saying there's three different ways that multiplication can involve arrows. 
This that we're looking at, this page here, is the third out of the three ways. It is by far the hardest and most complicated, but super important of the three ways. So I'm just gonna back up for a second just so you see what this mess is about. Like if, an, if a vector always is an arrow, I could just multiply that vector by a pure number. Like I could take a, an arrow that's like three feet long and pointing at 40 degrees, or whatever. And I could multiply it by two, meaning make it doubly as long, but it's still an arrow pointing in the same way. I just like stretch it out or I could multiply it by a half by like shrinking it in. That would be taking a vector, multiplying by a pure number. You just get a new vector of a different size like that. So we used to do that. We were using that still in here, but that's like one thing. Then the next step is, could we take two vectors, multiply them together, and get, could we take two vectors, multiply them together, like, what will happen? Will we get a vector or will we get a pure number? Well, it turns out we could do, we can get whichever we want as long as we use the appropriate tool. If we multiply two vectors together looking for a pure number, then we're, we're really doing there, which is the second of the three things, like not this. The dot product is, asking what happens if you multiply two arrows together um taking if you multiply two arrows together in a way that favors parallel arrows like if you multiply two arrows together in a way that does not want to get all caught up in direction it just wants to know how big are the size of these two arrows and so if the two arrows are actually laying right on, on top of each other we wouldn't even care that they're vectors we would just say they're like two numbers we'd multiply them um and we get a number well, we're, the dot product, the thing right before this, is like that. It's just you take the size of one arrow, multiply by the size of the arrow, other arrow, and the more and more spread out those arrows are, the more they differ direction, the more you have to sort of punish them for that and multiply by the cosine of that. So like if they get all the way toward 90 degrees, then you're saying, guys, you don't have anything to do with each other, actually. You're not, you really are concerned with direction, so forget it. Your dot product is zero. Right? So dot product, which comes right before this, is the operation, the measurement of two vectors that just looks at size. Now this thing that intimidates everybody, this thing, the cross product, is a measurement of two vectors that's measuring, that's looking at how big they each are, like the bigger either one is, the bigger this whole answer is gonna be, but it's also looking at how big their, a difference direction is making, like how different one, how much one is pointing in a direction that differs from the other. Like if they point in the same direction, then direction is making no difference. They're just like numbers. But this one wants to take into account and say the more two arrows differ in direction, the more we want to register that. In the end, we're going to get an answer that that is a vector, with, therefore has size and direction. Now, here to jump to the chase, I mean, that's a lot of talk, but Remember, any vector, we're saying any vector, well, let me back, any random vector, any random vector like Q, the vector Q, any random vector Q we're saying can be thought of as some amount, some number along the X axis plus some different number along the Y axis plus some different amount number along the Z axis. Each vector, vector A can be thought of that way, like, like an X piece, a Y piece, and a Z piece. And vector B can also be thought of that way. If we think, wait, I'm gonna stop there. Does that so far, are you cool with like, uh, I'm saying, sorry. I'm saying, and this is, I'm saying it's kind of new. It is new. I'm saying like vector A is always, This is a way of breaking. I mean, does this statement, honestly, is it okay to use do you, this statement right here so far? And I'm not trying to, or I don't know if you're still there. Oh, that's a yes? Or, uh, okay, cool, cool. Okay, and I'm saying to everybody, the other vector is thought of that way also. Then, literally, what the cross product, when I get the answer, sorry, when I get, Whatever the, however I get the answer, which I will show you again, but maybe it's better cut. However, I get the answer of the cross product between these two. It's going to be a vector. So it's gonna, the answer is gonna have some I part 
some j part and some k part. Like it's going to point somewhat in along the direction of each axis. So to look for the cross product is really to look for like what what really how big is the x piece? How big is the y piece? How big is the z piece, that's what I'm wondering. And it turns, so what's gonna go in each one of these parentheses is some number, but I don't like literally have numbers here. I have letters that stand for numbers. So in these parentheses, it's gonna be some combination of the letters uh, that equal up to a number. Um, I'll show you how we get them, but really in the end, like whatever's gonna go here is, is is the y component of one of the vectors multiplied by the z component of the other because this is the piece that's producing a vector along the x-axis like the cross product measures how perpendicular two vectors are and always gives you an answer that is perpendicular to each of those vectors it's all about perpendicularity so the x piece of our answer is going to be the product of the y piece and the z piece of those original two vectors. The y piece will be a product of the x and z. The z piece will be i and j. And and particularly what how I got them. So how I got them was I went term by term. I said, all right, a x. Sorry. I said A cross B, it equals all this cross all of this So I'm going to go term by term, like the first term is A X I hat like the first of the from the a cross with b x and here's where my handwriting i'm sure is not helping either these like these this is a subscript x on the a this is a subscript so they mean the x component the, of a and b this is the cross product there i i don't know how to do that better so this term is if i just rearrange it is a x b x i hat cross I had. Here's where I'm going to pause. This is the first term out of nine. Like if I'm going this, 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 and then this, this. If I'm doing all the terms out, the very first one, I have x on the number ax times the number bx times the vector i cross i. Now I'll just say just so the vector i cross i is a vector crossed with itself. Cross product always measures perpendicularity. A vector is not at all perpendicular to itself at all ever, that cross product is always zero. So the first term of these nine is, is gonna be zero. I'm not gonna do them all out now, but I'm just gonna show you the pattern. The first one will be zero, but the next one, if I'm just going term by term, okay, the next one is a x i hat cross, now I go down to the second one of the B, so B, Y, J hat. Now what is that? Just rearranging, it's A, X, B, Y, I cross J. Now, well, hello, hello. Okay, here's, I'm, I'm asking anybody, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but this is like the key, maybe confusing moment. Like, so now I have A, X, B, Y, times i cross j. Now, i cross i equals zero, canceled out the whole term. i cross j is not gonna equal zero. We've got two vectors here who are perpendicular, not parallel. So they're gonna, e when you cross them, they're gonna equal something. Um, what, they're gonna equal a vector whose length definitely is gonna be one because all of these unit vectors have length one, but it's gonna point perpendicularly to both those vectors, i.e., I'm just gonna say, the. Uh, I cross J equals K. In fact, I'll do a sidebar in a second to remind you. But I'm saying this whole term literally equals this number, AXBY, times K, like that much in the Z direction. Um, I'm gonna, I'll do the rest of the 
terms in a moment. For, I uh, well, yeah, I, actually, I will, which is better. Um, I'll do one more term to make sure we're clear. And then I think and I'll do something more useful. So the next term, so that, that's, so, so far we have zero plus this, AX, BY. Okay, well then the next term is going to be AX, I hat cross B Z K hat, like I'm just going first down to third. What is that? Turn the page. Yeah, sorry. Okay, what is that? Um, I already forgot what I said. Oh, yeah, we're saying A X I hat cross B Z K hat. Well, that's AX, just rearranging AX, BZ, I cross K. Now, I cross K is not zero, it's a vector. It's a vector that points perpendicularly to I and K, but according to the right hand rule. So something perpendicular to I and K must be along the J axis, but is it? positive or negative. Well, this is the right hand rule thing. If if I cross J gave me K, and if J cross K gives me I, and if K cross I gives me J, if you try them out with your right hands, so you'll see that I cross K goes in the other direction. That's negative J. Now, I'm speaking a little fast now, but I'm saying this gives you the next term will produce a negative sign. In other words, I can keep going, but sidebar, I, I don't, I, people should stop me, you or anybody should stop me if, if just as a, if this list, I'm gonna make a list, it will either help or confuse or, let's see. Um, I'm saying for all time, for all time. Okay, I dot I equals one. I dot J equals zero, which is the same thing as say J dot K, et cetera. Um, J dot I also equals zero. J dot J equals the same thing as, these are dot products, okay? sort of stare at them later and see if it's all consistent and makes sense. Like I didn't memorize this. It just, if the dot product is all about parallelism. So a vector dotted with itself is fully parallel, a vector perpendicular. These are all on the, you know, these are all vectors pointing along uh, X, Y, and Z axes. So they're all perpendicular axes. So everything we're getting here is either ones or zeros. That's the dot product. Cross product, cross product of unit vectors or handy if you want to just keep it as a some separate like I'm saying I cross J well let me start with sorry I cross I equals zero J cross J equals the same thing as K anything crossed with itself means it's how perpendicular how perpendicular is a vector with itself not at all zero but then I cross J equals K, uh, J cross K equals I K. And this is what you want to practice and see what I'm saying with the right hand rule, as strange as it sounds, J. And therefore, if I do any of these in the reverse order, so like J cross I, for example, must equal negative K, et cetera. That like I'm using that in my head, uh, uh, and I, I don't know for anybody if I should leave this page right now or I have that in my head that page. In effect, whenever I do out something like this thing that we're doing, um, yeah, this like so the first term I had I cross J. I know that's K. The second term I'm gonna have. I'm sorry, that was the second term. The third term will be I cross K. I know. But that's negative j. Um, I'll 
for anybody who's still hanging on and anybody can leave. Oh, oh, it's, oh there's oh, no, there are two of you. Okay. I'm going to literally, as long as you're here, I'm going to do this, finish all of these terms and do it all carefully. And not since it seems like we're in that, um, since you're okay with being here, like I'll be, in fact, I'll I keep going back and forth. I'll literally just do it all the nine terms out right now. Sorry with no interruptions if it helps and if it's not help you can hang up right while i'm doing it i don't care because i've got nothing else to do or you can stop me and say that's not what i need to see but if it's helpful i will carefully like slowly do out all the nine terms so you can see where i got that result or you probably want to see how i use it then i guess but um stop me if you don't want me to use but but i didn't see it the first hundred times really so i'm saying a cross b if we assume that a is the sum of its terms and B is the sum of its terms, then it's literally going to be A X I cross B X I plus A X I cross B Y J plus A X we're just going term by term, A X um, I cross B Z K. That's the first three terms. Plus now we're going to the next A Y J cross B X I plus A Y J cross B Y J. I'm going to stop right this. That's that's uh. Uh, one, two, three, four, five out of the nine terms. Let's just, since I'm running out of room, let me tally those up. The first one, the first one is I cross I, that is zero. So this first thing is nothing. The next one is I cross J, that's K. So I get A, the number AX, BY, that's just a number pointing in the K direction. This next one is I cross K. That's negative J, so I get negative A, X, B, Z, J. Like it's negative one that it commutes. Um, then this is J cross I. I cross J is K, so J cross I is negative K, so you get negative A, Y, B, X, K, and this one is J cross J, that's zero. Okay, so out of those five terms, three came up. I'm not gonna rewrite them yet. I'm gonna finish the last four. So that's five, out of, can I turn the page? Wait, or should I, should I wait? Or I'm gonna turn the page, just cause I'm not sure whether to or not, and then tell me if you want me to go back. But I'm gonna do the next four terms, which are the last terms. So, the, so I had done three and those two. So the next term is uh, B, oh, sorry, is A, Y, J cross B, uh, Y, J, I think, is that the one I was up to? Sorry, let me just make sure this. A, Y, J, oh, we just did that one. So A, Y, J cross B, Z, K plus A, Z, K cross B, X, I plus A, Z, K cross B, Y, J plus finally A, Z, K cross B, Z, K. Now I'm going to tally these up. Whoa, I don't know what that is. Okay. Do you want to pause? 
do you guys want to stop for a second and try to get do you uh, without me saying do you want to see if you i think it might be a good idea you don't have to tell me but take a minute to try to get like what i was doing before to get um what is this equal some of them will be zero but most of them won't be do you want to try for a second to get those um to see if we're together oh great okay cool cool yeah so do that for a second i will pause too this is what this is all about there's no reason not to use my oh cool So maybe either or both of you, just give me a thumbs up if you want me to go on, or if you want to try and answer. Or you, I mean, this is totally your time at this point for sure. So tell me the best way to. participants oh there's more people here than I oh oh this is great I'm so sorry I I keep forgetting to have the um the uh gallery view on I I actually thought there were a lot fewer there's a many more people here than I realized okay so all of you are try, um trying to get these terms that's great if any of you wants to tell me when to start or if you want to try something that's great oh I totally that's great that you're all here. Thank you. So what would be best? Should I write what I think the answer are? Does one of, one of you want to say, or do you want, um, how is really, oh, uh, uh, wait, yes, four people, I'm not sure what question I am. Um, wait, sorry, I don't know, should I, should I just be quiet for more time? It's fine, I just don't know, that's what you, so thumbs up for more time, complete. There's no, oh, thumbs up for I should start talking. I'm going too fast. Okay, I gather that means we need more time. You really cannot remove yourself, so I want it. More time, less time? Wait, could someone please tell me? Um, Thumbs up if you want more time, please. Uh, okay, thumbs up if you don't want more time, if you want me to start talking, or if you want to share an answer. You need some kind of, oh, that, that means I should, okay. Um, so I should, okay, should I start talking or does either of you want to say anything? Or I should just say, I'm gonna say, okay, oh my God, this is so strange. Um, okay, oh, oh yes, what, is that a person? You Matt Bueller? No? Do you want to try? No? Uh, okay. Well, uh, all right. The, the first one does not equal zero, right? The first one is ay times bz times some vector that is perpendicular to j and k, but but follows the right hand rule sequence. So I think it's negative i. In other words, I think the first one is negative ay bz. I, how, yes, no, does that look good to be? Yes, the agreement. I mean, we're an intimate enough group now that we should 
not lie to each I think that's the first one. I'll keep on. The second one is uh, is A Z B X. Like I'm always just multiplying the numbers by each other unless I get zero. Um, K cross I. Well, K cross I is J, uh, positive J. So this whole thing, J. In other words, yes, no. Are people seeing what I'm doing? I'm going to keep going. And the next one, K, uh, A Z. B, Y, K cross J. J cross K is I, so K cross J is negative I, so this is negative, blah, 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 blah. Yes, no, maybe so. We maybe should do the right-hand rule together, that might help, but then the last one is K cross K, that's not a, that's zero. So I'm gonna, unless someone stops me, I'm gonna move on, I now have the three terms from this list and the, and the, Three terms from the other list. Let me look at them. I'm going to put them all together now. I'm saying I'm saying that a cross b equals the sum of all of those uh, terms that I got. What were they? Well, the fur like I got a x b y k. Okay, I got a x b y k. That's like saying some number of oranges plus um, pl minus some number of apples, like minus AXBZJ, I already, I already forgot what it was, but uh, minus uh, uh, A, nah, I forgot, uh, I shouldn't, uh, negative A X B Z, right? Negative A X B Z J, okay. Plus plus A Y B X K. I'm just adding up all the terms I got. Plus A X B Y K, and then there was more. Um, uh, a minus A Y B Z I. A minus a y b z i right uh right um plus a z b x j and finally the last one um oh, where to go oh, uh, minus a z b y i now, minus A, C, B, Y, I. This looks like a big mess. It is a big mess, but look, what it is is six terms, two terms that have a J, two terms that have an I, two terms that have a K. Like the I, J, and K are like apples, oranges, and uh, uh, watermelons or whatever, I, or X, Ys, and Zs. I can combine like terms. In other words, A, X, and then we're A, X, I mean, A cross B, if I combine the terms, all the I terms together, I, if you look at it, it's, it's A, Y, B, Z minus A, Z, B, Y. Those, the two I terms look like each other inverted and the two J terms look like each other inverted. I'll need my levels. The two, um, J terms look like each other inverted because they are, and the two K terms look like each other inverted because they are, because what's happening here, we're just saying in the end, like if you want to get, if you want to cross two vectors and get something pointing in the X direction, the only thing that could ever do that would be some crossing of the Y and Z vectors or Z and Y vectors. In other words, the only way to get X is anything along the X axis is to go crossing Y with Z. Whether you point out or in, whether you get a negative sign or a positive sign, depends on which order you go. So A Y times B Z points in the I direction, and then A Z times B Y points in the other direction. That's why, that's why we're getting this pattern here. We end up getting 
a, a total amount in the one direction plus a total amount in the next. And this is very sloppy, but it is a pattern. Um, I'm not changing it, I'm just making it easier if I can. A, Z, B, X minus A, X. So this, now again, you guys can read it any time, but as long as I'm talking, I'm just gonna talk. This is, the, this is the thing that thankfully some of you are asking about. Like, this is literally the simplest way I can write the cross product as an operation performed on components. Like all of this is a vector, again, whose magnitude will be, sorry, all of this is a vector. All of this makes a vector whose um so if, if, if oh question all if we're calling the cross of a and b some vector c if c is the answer then we're saying we're saying c is a vector that has magnitude and direction we're saying if, if c is a cross b then then the length of C, like the pure magnitude of C, is sort of what I think you'd expect, just the product of the lengths of the vectors times that factor that tells you how perpendicular they are. And the direction of C is given by the right-hand rule, which perhaps we'll practice again right now if, if desired. Um, that's one way of saying it, just like one way of saying uh, vector A is, length a times the direction a but if you want but this this formulation does you no good when you oh sorry hello or no was that oh, this does you no good if you're given vectors written out the way we were in this problem um in the practice exam written out in terms of their components i can't do anything with this the only way i can get a cross product of vectors this is where the numbers came in to bring this finally full circle if i want to cross two vectors according to this like how does this help me cross two vectors um, well, like in the, in the, in the practice example, in the practice, in the practice, one of the vectors was written, they're both written out in terms of their components. So one of them was that many units in the X direction minus, I'll probably get this wrong, that in the other direction, um, right, plus one unit in the third dimension, that's one vector, A. And the other vector, B, was just happened not to have any X component that, you know, a vector could, it had zero X component. Those are the two vectors. How I use the whole thing that I just, what I just discovered, this whole long expression for the cross product of two vectors, how it literally applies here is, I'll literally do it out now if I want to cross A with B, the formula, so to speak, says I, I first take the Y term, sorry, the Y term of the of vector A, the Y term, like the component in the Y direction, that's negative 10. That's, in other words, AY is negative, oh, yes, no, should I stop? Like AY is negative 10, I think, AY is negative 10 and bx is positive four. Like the, by ay, I mean the y component of the a vector, it's negative 10, bx is positive four. So it literally says, take this number, multiply it by this number, subtract from that the, um, the, the z term of a, positive one times the y, just back. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. This is supposed to be negative right here. Okay. Um, so subtract. Here, I'll, you know what? I'm not, I'll write. I'm going to add one line, and then I'm going to stop this madness. But I'm saying the first term, according to the formula that we just developed, our first term is a y b z minus a z b y. All of that is how we get the x component of the vector, which is our answer. So going term by term, a y means negative 10, b z means uh, negative 4 minus a z, well that's positive 1, 
B Y B Y that's positive four. So this whole thing, uh, 40 minus four is how far we go in the X direction. Like the X component of our answer is 36 I, and then we do the same thing for the other two components. Is this helping anybody? I'm gonna stop for the moment because I feel like I'm making the matters worse, but is this doing anything for anybody? Could tell me a way I can do. No, this is helping. It helps. It, it works for me. Oh, good, good. All right. No, that good. I'm glad. No, that I appreciate that. If it's, um, it's definitely helping me. Good. I mean, um, and yeah, uh, we, this this is bringing physics and stuff back. This stuff that like kind of has to be drilled to. You have to get used to it, which is why I do. I promise the problem to all of you. The problem on the exam will be exactly exactly as hard and annoying as this and no harder or easier. Like it'll be like good old fashioned, just the same type of exercises where I just change around, you know, the example, but it's not, a tr won't be tricks or anything. You just have to know how to do these procedures. Um, uh, so, so I will, as soon as this recording is ready and I edit it down, I will post this recording. Hopefully that'll help. Um, but any other, I'm happy to answer any other questions or say anything to either of you. But I really, like I appreciate very much that you ask this question and especially that you say my answer is helpful. But even if it's not like, I, I can't do this and justify keeping people unless someone asks, but really it's, it's ridiculous if nobody asks me to slow this down and do it more. Um, um, I, this is the kind of thing that it's just outrageous. Like I, when I learned this in college, I promise, I didn't learn it until like three courses too late because they go so fast <laughs> and they just assume you get it the first time and no one gets this the first time. I, um, anyway. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anything kind of Bueller? Um, oh, did I? Um, again, when stuff like this, if you ever find stuff like this, if hopefully if my lectures are doing okay, great. If you find it on YouTube, not YouTube, I mean, if you find it on um, Khan Academy, all the power to you. Like, again, I just want to make it clear I do not scoff at cough. It's, uh, anything that Khan Academy covers, they cover very well and correctly and clearly and helpfully. I'm all for it but also three brown, one blue, I think. No, three blue, one brown, I always get it confused, um, is the even more advanced version of that. So if you feel like Khan Academy clarifies something, but somehow it's still feeling too hard in this class or whatever, three brown, no, three blue, one brown goes one step more sophisticated and has cooler graphics. So I recommend that too. But um, any other, um, What's the sign of zero? Well, all right, fair, good guess. I, I appreciate, but it's actually the other way around. Sign of zero is zero. And if you wanna memorize anything, mem yeah, no, it's okay, it's okay. But the, it, the, my, I hang my hat always, like all this stuff is easy to get backwards, forwards. I hang my hat on sign of zero is zero. Like, I just like, I just think of a snake, it's just sine zero, zero. Sine is super cosine crappy. Sine is the function that does what kind of makes sense. When the angle is small, the sine is small. As the angle, if the angle is zero, the sine is zero. As the angle gets bigger, the sine gets bigger. Sine is the one that makes sense. And, and that's the one to sort of remember, lock in. Cosine is anything backwards of that. Like if the sine of zero is zero, the cosine of zero is one. And then it gets lower and lower as the angle, cosine is the crappy, crazy backwards one. But sign, if you're, if you're gonna try to sort of anchor yourself anywhere, anchor yourself in sign of zero is zero. Um, anything else that I can, uh, I probably, mm -hmm. so do you guys play Animal Crossing? <laughs> or, uh, or, um, or has anybody seen, uh, does anybody play a Nintendo Switch? Cause I have to say, uh, uh, good job is the cool, if you haven't seen that game, that is the coolest thing to do during this virus, um, if you're into Nintendo Switch, which I am because I have two sons. Um, um, I highly recommend Good Job. Um, uh, uh, I, I know people, are, I can feel the laughter. I can feel the mockery. Okay, um, any, any, anything else I can say, do, before I date myself again? I mean, I literally had, a, I had an Atari 2600. Can I tell you that? Um, do you care? No. Um, well, okay, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, uh, oh, 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 so funny. Um, can you get a switch to you? Yeah, it, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I hear you. First of all, um, 
Well, I did not have, I had no, I jumped into video games via the Switch. I, so I, um, I don't really know how, but yeah, Animal Crossing rocks on the Switch for sure. Um, I think the Switch rocks period, but I can't. So what do you, what do you have? You have on um, like, like DS or uh, like um, anything I ask on there. Oh, wait, I can't even see. Oh, wait, I should know what that, wait, what is that? Actually, I don't know what that is. What is that? I should know, I'm embarrassed. Is, or is it placed? Yeah. Oh, wait, you do, wait. Oh, oh, wait, I love Zelda. So you do have a Switch. Well, I'm confused. You do have a Switch. Wait. Oh, you're two different people. Wait, what's going on now? I'm like totally confused. Wait, is that? No, I'm not Angel. Uh, I'm so sorry. Okay, you're horrible. Okay. You know, it's amazing that I could actually manage to be, even with names and faces staring me in the face and help me out, I could still make a totally racist you know, uh, mistake. Um, okay, first of all, I'm, right, I'm the Italian professor, the other one's the Jewish one. All right, um, um, so yes, sweet, you have the switch, I'm all for, and yes, it's all about Zelda, that's awesome. And by the way, have you, <laughs> have you made the, um, anybody who does have the switch, have you made the goggles? I think the goggles rock, um, the VR goggles, like for uh, um, uh, Mario Odyssey and, um, and uh, they're awesome, right? They're, they're a reason to get the switch in itself. Uh, oh, 3DS. I know what the 3DS. I remember getting that from old. Right, okay. So I gather, I'm sure Animal Crossing is good there, but um, anyway, I'm just babbling now. Um, but, uh, oh, and I'm get oh, and I'm getting polite signals to get the heck off the computer. Okay, but everybody's cool for right now and maybe try problem one if you get adventurous for Wednesday, but um, is it awesome? All the power to the people. May the net field be with you. You will all get A's. I can feel it in my bones. Uh, uh, God, electron bless everybody.